Hi, this is section 1.4, limit definition of the derivative alternative form and trig review. What we want to do now is find the derivative. This is getting into the calculus portion. The derivative will give us the slope of a tangent to a curve at a point. In other words, if we can zoom in on a point, like zoom in on this point right here, if we can zoom in there, we can find out what the slope and what that little line looks like in close. And so that will give us what we call the derivative. The derivative gives us the slope of the tangent line. Well, how do we do that? Well, first of all, we start with a secant line. And if you notice here, we have a secant line that intersects the curve in more than one point. What we want to do then is take the derivative at this C value. And what we do is we do the slope, find the slope for a point that goes through C and another point that goes through C plus H. So this little portion here is H, which is just a little bit more than what we have. And so what we do then is that if I change this and take this H value, right now my H is this amount. If I decrease this H now, and I want to bring it back. I want H to get smaller and smaller and smaller. When that happens, if you notice my secant line is now becoming what we might call a tangent line. Right in and around this area, we have the tangent line which is approximating the curve. And if we kept on zooming in, zooming in, these two lines, this, this tangent line and the curve, would be identical looking. And so that's our objective. Make h go to zero, then we can find the slope of the tangent anywhere. So looking at your notes, now we have two points on the curve. This black piece is the curve. The red line is the tangent line. The blue line is the secant line. If I take the points that I do have here, this one, we call this x comma f of x. And then we go ahead and do this one here. This would be x plus delta x. Now in the previous page that I showed you, this was a c and this was an h. And so we just have different notations for each one of this. This is more in general, x plus delta x. Small piece of x would represent that h in the previous picture. Now to find the y coordinate, all I do is take the x coordinate and plug it into that function because that's the function that we're looking at. Then we want to go ahead and find the slope. How do we find the slope? Well, it's y minus y. So if I go f of x plus delta x, which is right here, minus this f of x, that's what I get in the numerator. Change in y over change in x. If I do the change in x, this gets simplified down to delta x. But that means that I started with x plus delta x, subtract x, x minus x goes away, and so then all I'm left with is the delta x. So this would be the slope of the secant line. Now to get the slope of the tangent line, we said that we wanted h to go to zero. In this case, h is the same thing as delta x. And so this would be the equation of my tangent line, which we now call the derivative. And namely, it is the derivative of f of x. So here we have the derivative of the function at a given va x value. The most commonly used symbol for this is f prime of x. And there's other notations that you will see as well. So we have f prime, y prime, dy dx, which is a change in y over a change in x. The derivative of f of x over dx, with and that means with respect to x. We'll talk about that more later. The slope of the tangent line and then the definition by the slope, using the slope and the limit, would be this one right here. And then this is a, another form using h, which is similar to that graphical one that I did have before. We're throwing a lot of things at you right now, but you'll get this. Now the next one is a vertical tangent line has no slope because the slope of a vertical line is undefined. We don't have anything for it. So the curve has no derivative at any point where it has a vertical tangent line. 
The term differentiation is finding derivatives. I didn't say that very well, differentiation. And then if a derivative exists at a point on a curve, the function is said to be differentiable at that point. So what we want to do is, example one, we want to go ahead and find these derivatives. So let's get into this. So I write down my definition from up above, and then we're going to go ahead and find this derivative. And what does this mean? So if we start with this, and we always have to keep this limit thing going along. So the limit as delta x goes to 0. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my function, which is f of x is equal to x squared plus 2. And I'm going to take the x plus delta x, which I have right there, and I'm going to put it in wherever I see the x. And so I'm going to go, big parentheses, squared plus 2. What do I put inside those big parentheses? And I'm going to put in x plus delta x wherever this x was. And then that would just be my representation of this right here. These two are the same thing, but now this one's more specific. Then I have to go ahead and subtract my f of x. So I'm going to subtract. f of x is just x squared plus 2. Should have done this in pre-calculus. <clears throat> and then this is all over delta x. Now I'm going to expand this and start simplifying it. So I take x plus delta x quantity squared, and I'm going to get x squared plus 2x delta x. Treat this delta x like one entity, just like an x, and then plus delta x quantity squared. That's the expansion of this right here. Then I get the plus 2 there, and then I get a minus x squared minus 2 from this right here. Then I go ahead and simplify, and if I notice, I can cancel some things off plus 2 minus 2, x squared minus x squared. So I simplified, rewrote it. Now I can do the rabbit method. If I have delta x in each one of these terms, I can cancel them off. As long as I have a monomial on the bottom, I can cancel it in each term in the numerator. So if I do that, I'm going to be left with the limit as delta x goes to 0. Here I'm just left with 2x plus delta x. And to evaluate this limit, now I do what we call a direct substitution. I'm going to take delta x, and wherever I see it, I'm going to substitute in a 0. And here I'm going to get now just 2x, because this goes to 0. And so that is the derivative of f of x equal to x squared plus 2. And that would give me 2x. And we write this as f prime of x. Part b then says, OK, I want to go ahead and evaluate this derivative at negative 3. So in doing that, what I'm really saying is, what is the slope of the tangent to this curve right here, tangent to that curve at negative 3? So all I have to do is say then, that f prime is equal to 2x. So then I just do f prime of negative 3. Go ahead and plug it in. So it would be 2 times negative 3, which does give me negative 6. That would be the slope of the tangent to the curve at negative 3. Moving on, example number 2. If we have y equals Square root of x, we want to find y prime. y prime is the derivative of y, which is similar to f prime of x. So what we do is we start off with the definition. So we have the limit as, let's use h this time. h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. That's the definition of the derivative. And then we plug these things in to this function. So wherever I see the x, I'm going to replace it with x plus h. So I'm going to put square root x plus h minus, and whatever f of x is, which is the square root of x, all over h. 
Now we want to try to simplify this, and to simplify this we use a technique called multiplying by the conjugate. If you notice right here, we have a minus symbol. We want to go ahead and turn that into uh, something simpler where we get rid of these radical symbols. We can do that by multiplying by the conjugate. We get the conjugate by multiplying by the same exact thing except for with a plus sign. So I'm going to take and multiply this by the square root of x plus h plus the square root of x. And I can't just multiply by that one thing alone. I have to multiply by 1. So I put the top and bottom as exactly the same thing. So now when I multiply this, I'm going to have to do a little FOIL. Notice when I do that and I do that, the radicals go away. And then the middle terms are going to go away because one's going to be positive, one's going to be negative. So all we end up with then is x plus h minus x. And this is all over h quantity x plus h plus square root of x. Now I did a big no-no here. I left out the limit. You need to have this limit every time. So I need to make sure I continue that on. Now simplifying this, this x cancels with this, and I'm just going to get h over h. Oh, I forgot the limit again. Don't do that, Tim. We get h times the square root of x plus h plus the square root of x in the denominator. When I do this, I can go ahead and cancel this h. Now I can do a direct substitution. Before that, I'd have 0 over 0. I have to resolve the 0 over 0. So then now if I plug in the 0 into h, I'm just going to get 1 over square root of x plus square root of x, which we all know as 1 over 2 times the square root of x. That is my y prime. So with the radicals, multiply by the conjugate pair. And that will get rid of your radicals, and then you can simplify. Don't distribute at this point right here, because it just makes things a little bit messier. Just leave it simplified. So number three here now, what we have is different notation. This is y is equal to f of t. So we can find dy dt, which we also can go f prime of t. This denominator is the independent variable that we're dealing with. And then the numerator one, the y there, would be the dependent variable. So that's how we write it. Change in y over change in t. Or we can write it as f prime of t, either way. So if we start off with the definition of derivative. So notice now I put in the, the t there rather than the x. And so we have a small change here of the t. And we're doing the slope again of the secant. We want h to go to 0, so then we're finding the slope of the tangent line. So now if I plug these things in, wherever I see a t, I'm going to replace it with the t plus h. So this is going to be 2 over t plus h. And then for this part here, I'm going to get minus 2 over t. And that would be all over h. Now, if I have compound fractions like this, I like to clear the fraction, so I'm going to multiply everything by the LCD of the t plus h and the t. So I'm going to put that out here. So now what I can do is distribute. Multiply by there. The t plus h's will cancel, so I'm just going to be left with 2t. So this will be the limit as h approaches 0. I'll have 2t. And then from this part, when I distribute this, the t's will cancel. So then it'll be minus 2, and don't forget to distribute both of those. And then this would be h, t, t plus h. So I, exp uh, I expanded this right-hand portion, and notice that now I got 2t minus 2t. So I'm left with negative 2h over this other stuff. 
And if you also notice, this H will cancel with this H now once I get these two out of the way. So I'm going to be left with now, by the way, this was 0 over 0 at this stage. Now I can plug in the H being equal to 0, and I'm going to get negative 2 over T plus T times T, which would be T squared. So I get a T squared from there, H goes to 0, and so I'm just going to have this right here. This is equal to F prime of T, which we also call dy dt, derivative of y with respect to t. A couple of nuances here. Remember that I keep my limit going along, going along until I actually do my direct substitution of the zero. Then I don't write limit anymore at this last stage here. Once I do a direct substitution, I can get rid of this limit portion here. There is an alternate form for the limit definition of a derivative, which we do have right up here. Honestly, it gives you right here. How do we get this? Well, this could be at a point that we're talking about, for instance, C. So if I take this point right here, where the x-coordinate is C, and the y-coordinate would be f of C, because in the black we have this curve, y equals f of x, and then we also have something in general which we call the x term, x, f of x. We can find the derivative at a point by using the slope again. How do we do that? Well, we take the y minus y. So here's a y minus this y. That's the change in y in the numerator here, f of x minus f of c. Then in the denominator, we get x minus the x, which would be the x minus c, which I have right here. So it's just another way to develop the slope and then get to the tangent line slope of the curve using the secant line. That's all. So how do we use it in example number four here? Well, if f of x is equal to x cubed, use the alternate form to find f prime of 3. So this is my target point, which is the x coordinate of 3. So really, you can look at it this way. If I set up the slope of a, a line, I could use two points. One point is going to be x comma x cubed. The other point can be 3 comma, well, what do I do with the 3? Well, I cube it. So these would be the two points that you would use. I shouldn't have put this bar in here, but that's the two points that I do use. So if I do my y minus y, I just am going to get the limit as x approaches 3. Now it's a little bit different. We don't have h going to 0. We have the 3 getting closer and closer to x is what we're doing. And then we're going to do the x cubed minus 3 cubed, which would be my y minus my y, all over my x minus my x. Notice if I, if I do a direct substitution here, I'm going to plug in the 3, I'm going to get 0 over 0. Don't want that. So to simplify this, yeah, I'm going to have to factor. You can go to your calculator and factor this if you want, or you know that it's a difference of cubes, so it's going to be x minus 3. And then you're going to get x squared plus 3x plus 9. And then this would all be over x minus 3. Now what I can do is go ahead and cancel. So it's not 0 over 0. And now I can also do a direct substitution by taking this 3 and plugging it in for x. And when I do that, I'm going to get 9 plus 9 plus 9. So the slope of the tangent at 3 of f of x equals to x cubed is going to be 27.